Hey everyone, Mike Linares here, and welcome to the Code Blue podcast brought to you by Holly Blue, the first one and only social media app created by nurses, specifically for nurses. So think of this as a community made just for you. You guys can download the app and connect with nurses in your area and also boost your knowledge and career. So, hey, what's going on again? Glad to be back for another episode. <laughs> yeah, um, it's funny because we just did an episode um, about all things nursing, but I really wanted to hone down on really what made you successful on your uh, social media handles. And we're going to be covering some top tips for new nurses. And it can really apply to any, any nurse, especially for nurses that are switching uh, units, kind of like you, uh, yeah. you recently did. So um, first things first, uh, you were in the ER for two and a half years, and then you switched to mother baby, uh, which is like a huge shock. But yes. I think one of the biggest things is, uh, especially when you're switching over to a new unit is staying organized and brushing up on things that you probably haven't covered in a while. So right. what do you want to touch on in terms of staying organized? So just a little bit of background. Mm -hmm. um, that I was in the ER for two and a half years and I recently switched to mother baby, which is inpatient. And this is my first time ever being an inpatient nurse ever. Oh, okay. Totally different. I did not think it would be such a huge shock as it was. And so working in such a high stress environment like the ER, I figured, oh, like I can do anything. Like I did one of the most stressful units. This will be cake. I was wrong. <laughs> Inpatient nursing is totally, totally different. It's a total different kind of stress. Hmm. The organization is totally different. I had to come up with like a whole new way of organizing my day. Mm -hmm. It was a huge shock. And actually, I cried for the first time <laughs> ever at work. Sorry. Being, <laughs> thing, you would think of being in the ER, seeing like death constantly, all this that I would cry there, but no, I cried mm. on the baby unit. <laughs> what like was what made you cry? Was it the stress or was it like you know the happy cry? No, it was a happy. <laughs> oh, okay, it was a happy cry. Okay. And I was like making mistakes, and it was more mm. so I felt like such an experienced nurse. Well, experienced two years, whatever that is. Yeah, whatever. Get out of here. No, I'm just kidding it and feeling like a brand new new grad again is mm. a shock. I felt like I was starting all over. I knew nothing about um, OB. I knew about neonates because I worked in a PDER, so we did see infants a lot, but it's a lot different when, when they're like literally fresh out of the vagina, like two hours old. There's so many hashtags we can use from these podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> I got to pull a baby out, <laughs> like fresh out of Compton, fresh out of vagina. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it is like it, it was a total, total shock to me. And so, and plus, I had uh, on my unit currently we can have up to eight patients, which is a lot. So I'm used to like one to three. I think you're muted. Oh, whoops! It's the mother and the infant. Yeah, so that's, so, mm -hmm. yeah, four is, yeah, now eight. Dang. And then if you have triplets. <laughs> well, normally they go to NICU if they're triplets. Oh, okay. Okay. But yeah, they try to keep us at um, six. So that's three moms and three babies. But mm -hmm. if it's crazy, you can have up to eight. And so it's very overwhelming. But once I kind of got my rhythm and learned my organization, it was like, I mean, it's not a breeze, but it made the world of a difference. And mm. no, <laughs> plus yeah. I was just having a day emotionally that day. <laughs> it was just all getting right. to that time. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. I can see that. Yeah. So um, how long have you been in the, uh, in this new unit? I've been here for a little over three months now. So I'm finally like getting my footing, learning my own rhythm and what works for me. And I actually posted something about this recently. My mm -hmm. lifesaver has been my clipboard. Oh my gosh. I yeah. never, I would have been the clipboard kind of person. <laughs> what there is I a am. clipboard kind of person? 
just you know it just you would never see an er nurse walking out with the clip oh yeah okay yeah yeah to give everyone some like you know background knowledge uh we both were er worked in the er and yeah in the er like you don't really you have no patience to really research before coming to your shift right and like you don't really know what you're gonna get right you don't even need technically a brain you just need maybe somewhere to write notes i guess but it's you're totally different, right? Than being on a unit and having all the patients for the entire shift for 12 hours. Right. Like the ER is just chaos. Yeah. And so there's, all the time. there's nothing really to organize. Mm -hmm. The patient is a lot more organized. There's things that are scheduled. Like I've never given a scheduled med in my life before. <laughs> you just give it when you get it kind of thing. <laughs> in the you ER. Give it when you get it. Uh. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they need Tylenol. They need metoprolol whatever it is whenever it gets here from pharmacy get it okay so what is it about your magical clipboard uh what do you have on your clipboard is it your brain is it like uh i don't know what is it <laughs> so i have for each couplet a couplet is a mom and a baby i have oh. a, that we print out. <laughs> <laughs> a little couplet yeah it's really cute it's yeah. a sheet that we with all their information and what I do is I'll fold it in half and on the back side I'll write every single med I have to give that day if the baby needs a bath if it needs hepatitis B if it needs a circumcision um, a heart disease screen whatever the, they need I write it down on that sheet I highlight it so I know throughout the day these are the tasks that I need to be completed mm -hmm. I will say in working in mother baby, there's a lot less surprises. So in the ER, things just happen, surprise you. For the most part, things go kind of to plan. Like you more or less know how your day is going to plan out at the beginning of the day. You know exactly everything you have to get done. Mind yeah. you, things that always happen. But for the most part, I've seen that I'm more or less able to plan my day in the mornings. Oh, okay. I write down absolutely everything I need to do. And then as the day goes on, I just check it off. And if I didn't have that visual aid and somewhere to keep it all together, especially with having so many patients, I would be lost. Like I wouldn't even know what I would do with myself. The magical clipboard. Okay, so this this kind of got me thinking about um, how you start your shift. Because they always say in like success books and things like that, it's like how you start your day that determines the rest of your day. So in the same way, how, how you start your shift really will determine your shift. So after you get report, is that like, what do you do next? So after I get report, I will, I do, we do bedside report. So I'll introduce myself oh. to the, at that time, I just do like a once over of my patient. Like that's my first assessment. Like they're, they're alert. They're talking to me. I don't see any active bleeding. Great. Write my name on the board, go sit down and then I will look up my patient. So the meds for the day, any crazy orders that are in, anything that I have to do for the day, try to see if this patient is going to be discharged today or not. Um, and then I do that for every patient. And then mm. after that, I will start my rounds and do like a full assessment on everybody. Nice. Okay. Very, very cool. Now you, we touched on organization for uh, your shift. Any other tips in terms of organization for, I guess, some goals? Um, we talked about something before this episode in terms of like you write everything down so you can see it so that you can complete it. Do you do this like at home, like on a whiteboard or anything or, or no? Not on a whiteboard, but I have a planner and oh, okay. I have all of my goals in there. Like I have monthly goals, yearly goals, like my daily goals. And there's just something with crossing things off a list that just yeah. makes so I like to write it there so I can eventually just cross it out. And it just helps keep you on track, keep you motivated when you actually see your goal. You, it's something like that you're actually working towards, like working to complete versus just having it floating around in your brain. Yeah, they, they always say successful people have always have like a to-do list or a checklist that they're going by. Mm -hmm. And I, I always recommend students to have like three goals for the year. And then you can break those three big goals down to like three little goals for the month, each month, you know, and then you can slowly chip away. Like every day you should be working towards something. Every day should have purpose. Mm -hmm. Even if that's purpose is the, you know, um, never mind. I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> I know the holidays are coming up. It's just to eat and be all fat and sassy. Okay. So, 
<laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. So I guess that's a good segue in terms of self-care. Um, a big thing with new grad nurses is feeling overwhelmed, getting to that burnout and, you know, crying because you're not picking up as fast as, you know, or learning as fast as you should. So um, what are some tips on how to avoid burnout? Um, and I guess maybe some self-care things. So this is actually a question I get very frequently. Um, I've actually heard a few people online saying that there were nurses on TikTok talking about how stressful nursing is and they're scared to join the career because um, they're scared they're going to be stressed out. And I'm not going to sugarcoat everything. Sometimes nursing is stressful. Sometimes you have some really rough days. Sometimes, you know, you just need to drive home in silence <laughs> after your shift. Yeah. Um, but I have found really healthy ways to help deal and cope with stress. Um, and this is coming from somebody, just like we said earlier, we both worked in the ER and mm -hmm. Aside from the ICU, that's one of the most stressful places in the hospital. For one, we see a lot of death there. Um, and that is something that can be really hard to deal with. But I've been fortunate to um, kind of have this mindset that really helps me get through it. And so for one, I would say lean on your coworkers. Working in really high stress environments, going through really hard times with other people, it creates like this camaraderie. And every unit I've been on, my coworkers have always made the difference. Like if you're having a tough day, chances are so is the nurse next to you and you guys mm -hmm. can use that to lean on each other. It makes a huge difference, like being able to experience something with somebody else and knowing you're not the only one that goes through this. And mm -hmm. also it, it kind of just becomes like a joke and just something to like deal with with each other. Like, oh, we had such an awful night tonight and just something to laugh about honestly like it just becomes you create like a little work family yeah. and after going through like going through some of these crazy codes and all this stressful stuff like it feels good to go through it with with other people and know that you can lean on others for support yeah it's like um, a team right yeah exactly your coworkers make a huge difference and also just individually just having like a good like a decompressing routine when you mm -hmm. get off of work at home like don't carry that around with you for the day so if I had like a really crazy day at work some of the things I love to do is listen to like nice just like mellow music I really mm -hmm. like writing my journal I like to read these are all things that kind of just like wash away everything that happened through mm -hmm. the day and my self-care routine is not going to be the same as yours. Like you need to find what works for you. Maybe your self-care routine is listening to like hard rock and that's what <laughs> happy. If that's what it is and do it as long as it's, you know, healthy and not something like doing drugs or something. Oh, wait, wait, come on. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like find your routine and what works for you. Yeah. yeah I got to find what works for you. Okay. Any, uh, so like wine, bubble bath, uh, some yeah. Luther Vandross, no? some Drake no I'm just kidding <laughs> Drake. do you uh, okay so what in what kind of music what's on your playlist that you like oh literally I have the music taste like one of my favorites is um Sade I love oh yeah yeah she's pretty good so like mellow and chill mm -hmm. um and do you like Drake too <laughs> <laughs> Do you recommend, uh, I guess, like any, um, I don't know how to call it, but going for a walk or like, uh, do you do any soaks or do any like essential oils or anything physical? I always, like right after my shifts, <clears throat> I always shut off my dog and that alone oh. just like takes immediately, like takes my mind off of everything that happened. Mm -hmm. throughout. It's just like a nice peaceful time and just just kind of think and just be outside and get some fresh air because you're in the hospital 12 and a half, 12 and a half hours a day. And I most know. of the time you're not in sunlight <laughs> or anything like breathe fresh air alone. It's just something that makes you feel better. Isn't that the craziest part, right? Like the, the amount of drive time to go to work and then back from work, you're at work more than you're at home basically. Absolutely. For 12 hours. Yeah. And then you have to go home and then do all the other crap 
like you know all the other chores make food take a shower do this that the other but um i had a point to that i'm sorry <laughs> i was just gonna say that uh I think the hardest part of, you know, being a new grad nurse or, you know, learning to switch uh, departments and not being, you know, that badass, like, you know, ER nurse for, you know, however long that nurses are and then switching and have to learn a new tactile skill. Um, one of the hardest parts is being able to accept that, especially with high achievers um, and being able to kind of have this grace period. They always say like, when you're taking off on a new like venture, um there's like an acceleration or like um i guess when you're reaching your cruising altitude it's about 20 percent of your flight so they say always have a lot of grace um try to learn as much as you can don't be too hard on yourself in that ascenting period until you reach that cruising altitude um and usually that's like what three months or six months uh when you're switching units and wh what would you say like when do you start feeling comfortable as a new grad like in the er was it after a year or yeah, honestly, I didn't start feeling comfortable in the ER as a new grad for probably a, a year. Mm. And honestly, I always say that you should never feel 100% comfortable. Mm. Because when you feel too comfortable, you feel like you know what you're doing. That's when mistakes start to happen. Mm -hmm. You should feel a little bit uncomfortable. So that way you stay on your toes. You're constantly learning. You're watching what you're doing. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, but it gets so, better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gets better. You, you might cry a few times, but it'll be okay. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, it's, it's a big skill to learn in terms of leaving your work at work and, you know, coming home and decompressing because you always need that time to rest. So um, one last thing in terms of knowledge and kind of getting to point A to point B faster, you have like this productive hour every week where you brush up and reinforce knowledge. Um, can you touch on that? So people think I'm crazy for this. But Nerd. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I really do enjoy like learning outside of the hospital. Like I, I try to do like at minimum at least an hour a week, but I do like take time at home and brush up on my nursing, my nursing knowledge. So now that I'm in postpartum nursing, newborn nursing. I have like a dedicated uh, maternal OB book and I spend time like reading through that, highlighting, taking notes. And it really helps like solidify your knowledge. Sometimes I'll see something in a hospital setting and I won't really understand it or I won't know too much about it. And then I'll go home and read about it. And that way I can connect it. It's like, oh, I saw this at the hospital. Like that makes so much more sense now that I know like the backstory, why this happens, how this works. And I think that really is what makes the difference in becoming like a really good, knowledgeable nurse. You have to put in the work to learn outside of just the bare minimum. Yeah, yeah. I always say you got to learn before you earn. So, um, and that's pretty cool because, you know, it's only, you know, one hour a week. It can be whatever day you want it to be. And it doesn't feel like, you know, an entire eight hour day. So that's kind of cool that you do that. And it's pretty cool. Like, you kind of dig into something that you saw that week that you're curious about. So. And it's, it's easier. Unlike nursing school, the specialty you're in, most people, you know, are interested in the specialty. So it's easier to learn about it versus like, you know, if you want to be an ICU nurse and you're going through OB in nursing school, it's like, you don't want to learn about funduses and all that. <laughs> I want to learn about funduses. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> have fun with the, I always thought the fundus I was like the first time I heard I'm like that sounds pretty fun you know <laughs> never mind <laughs> all right that wraps it up we're gonna we're gonna cut after that <laughs> anything else you want to share with the audience before we uh head out I think that was it we, we got some good tips for new grads in there yeah so guys uh to get more tips uh from Alexis Nicole follower at nurse nook on YouTube at Nurse Nook and on our IG handle um, at Alexis Nicole with two A's. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Code Blue podcast. Don't forget to download Holly Blue, the one and only nursing app for nurses created by nurses.